Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, are you ready? Now I've got lots of things from yesterday to share with you. Can we call for that daily bread? Join me right now in faith and say, Father, I demand right now from you my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I was sharing something with you yesterday, and I promise we're going to continue from there. I will fulfill that promise now. Praise God. Hey, but before we go into that, hey, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I invite you to do so. And then number two, help us share this message. Just share it with anybody. You should share it, share it with everybody. Praise God. Everybody. Let, let, let this truth come to everyone and bring mighty deliverance to them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, I was telling you yesterday that, hey, if you are experiencing all those things, spiritual um, um, maybe stagnation or press, you know, you know some people actually tell you, if they are going for anything um, big, maybe they are supposed to get a job, they are praying for something and someone has promised them something. Just before that day, they will have this experience in the night. And then the moment they have that experience, they, that, they just know that it's over. They are not getting that thing. Because they, they tell you that the devil attacked them. And, and how long has this been going on? Well, uh, as long as I remember, maybe like 10 years, and they begin to count all the things they have lost. I was telling you yesterday, what you really need. This is what you really need. You need the word of God to come to you in that area. You see, so I was using sleep to, to as an example yesterday, but it's the same thing you apply it in everything else. So you go before that and then the Lord tells you, look, I want you to sleep from this time to this time. Thank you, sir. Now, as, as that word came to you, life has been injected into your sleep life. What does that mean? There is nothing that will be able to come as long as you are conscious of that word and you keep it. Remember what Jesus said, anyone who hears my word and keeps it, he is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me shall be loved of my father. And we will come and make our abode with him. See? Okay. I notice every night when I sleep, something comes to press me. Now, sometimes people will even tell you the time. Okay. Now, I go before the Lord. I say, Lord, here's our deal. I want to have my sleep time from you. What time do you think I should be sleeping? I want you to tell me. And if finally the Lord speaks, he will, he will. So if he comes to you and says, now son, now because you've asked, he would answer you. I want you to sleep from this time to this time. He may not answer you the first day. He may not even answer you the first week. But like I told you yesterday, the moment that word is authored from your mouth, that devil, whatever it is that used to press you in the night, will, see, will pause. Yeah, and that's why I say you must speak out. You must say it out. It will pause. Now, don't take it for, don't think that when they pause, they have gone. No. Uh -uh. They heard your request. And out of fear, they will stand back. Okay. Now, listen. There are times that your actions can be influencing that. Your physical actions can be influencing that. But it doesn't matter what it is. You've gone before the Lord for solution, right? Now, this is the solution. Oh, Father, stop this thing, stop this thing. Ah, ah, ah. All you need is to deliberately receive the word of God concerning your ninth time. Now, the moment the word comes to you, it has been established that the Lord has taken over your night. Yeah. And 
you keep his word, if he tells you, I want you to be sleeping from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m., from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., or he tells you, look, I want you to be awake at between 1 and 2 a.m. every night. Okay, sir, the moment and whatever the instruction is, that means the word of God have come to you concerning your ninth time. And as long as you keep that word, brothers and sisters, you will sleep when you sleep like a baby. <laughs> I'm telling you, they, they are gone forever. Forever they go, they are gone. Now it's the same thing. Someone is threatening you at work, and, and the person I've told you, look, I'll deal with you. All you need is for the word of God to come to you consigning your job. You are threatening that work. Very simple. Don't go and start fighting anybody. Go back to the Lord and say, Lord, since I've been working, you've not spoken to me concerning my office. You've not spoken to me concerning my job. So, Lord, I want you to talk to me about my job. And that's how you get the word to come to you. Another way, because... Now, beyond, I talked to you about sleep yesterday and today. Now we go to something else. We go to marking territories. See, now, when, when I say marking territories, establishing your portions. Because sometimes people get jobs and they stay there for a few months. They are thrown out. And that's keep that happening in the last two years. They've had like four jobs. And that's not right. That's not right by any standard because it doesn't speak of commitment on your side. And number two, something truly is chasing you. So what do you do in such situations? Now, it's funny because sometimes you, you, you think that, no, I, I saw a better opportunity. You were working here. And how long have you been working here? Two months. And then I saw another opportunity. And you quickly want to jump at that opportunity. Hey, calm down. Slow down. Is that what the Lord told you to do? So you find out that you keep moving. You thought that was a good opportunity and you jumped at it. And then you only to get there and realize that it was a trap. Ah, I have to free myself. I have to free myself from this place. And then you start looking for another opportunity. You hear, if whether it's good or bad, you just jump out. At least let me just know that I have a job. It's not right. So what do you do? Allow the word of God to come to you concerning your job. Now, one way, I want you to listen to this now. One way that you allow God to come into your life where territories, inheritances are concerned, one very sure way is by offerings and sacrifices. When I mean sacrifices, financial givings. I'll explain that to you. Because sometimes you see these things in scripture, you don't understand how they apply in our life so and then people come and start arguing things with you like oh okay you know you don't understand why god commanded them to give tithes you don't understand why god commanded the children of Israel to give first fruits you don't understand all those things you, you just think that it is the pastor's way of getting money from the brethren okay okay if you are going to accuse your pastor for that sorry now, I'm, I'm not the one, you, you are not coming to my church, for example, and I'm telling you this truth. So if you accuse your pastor for that, okay, I'm, I'm a neutral person that is telling you this truth now, and I want you to pay attention. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, you don't realize that the purpose of tithing, the purpose of first fruits and offerings you don't realize the reason. Now, first and foremost, the reason is not because God needs money. No, not at all. He doesn't need money. I'm telling you, if God needs money, he knows where to get it. <laughs> Look at Jesus. He wanted money to pay tax. He didn't tell Peter, Peter, organize a crusade. 
Let's go, let's go have a crusade. Or, or send a message, te send text message to everybody. We're having a meeting tomorrow. Hey, tax collectors, come next tomorrow. You'll get your money. No, that's not what Jesus did. Jesus said, Peter, take your hook. Go to the river, the first fish you cut. It's amazing that Jesus could have easily said, drop your hook, you will catch a big fish. Take that fish, sell it at the market for this amount of money. When you sell it, then you pay out the tax with that money you make from the fish. That would have sounded so logical. <laughs> but that's to tell you that Jesus is Lord. What did he say? Take your hook, go to the river, the first fish you catch. Open the mouth, you will see coins in the mouth. Now I want you to think. A fish carrying coin, in coin or coins in the mouth will still see a hook and a bait and still go try to eat that bait when there is a coin in the mouth. Think. And that's to tell you that that's not a natural occurrence. That was a supernatural occurrence. God caused that fish to bring money to Jesus. So that fish got that money and said, take it to Jesus. Take it. See that hook there? Yeah, that's the meeting point. Go. Now, we don't know what Peter did after that. You know, if the fish was still alive. <laughs> After that, now, but if that fish for adventure for any reason was alive, he, he should have just released the fish to go. So, thank you for your assignment. Go and leave. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, because because the fish brought the coins. Now, I'm telling you that to say this: God knows how to get money. The money in your hand is not what He is looking at at all. Clear that from your mind. Now, if that's not what he's looking at, then what is the purpose? Why did he tell us to give tithes? Why did he, ah, people are giving tithes. Eh? We're not supposed to be giving tithes in the New Testament. I, I'm, I feel sorry for you. Really, really sorry for you. Praise God. You know why? Because number one, you don't even understand the concept of tithing. You don't. Anyone who tells you that we're not supposed to tighten in the New Testament truly doesn't understand the concept of tithing. They don't. Take it from me. They don't. Whether you accept it now or when we meet Jesus, if that's where you want to wait to find out, I even doubt if you will meet him in the first place. Yeah, because if, if he hasn't spoken to you about this truth, then I wonder what he speaks to you about. Yeah, and you know that. You know, I remember a few years ago, um, uh, that the Adeboe had said something like that. You know, he said, anyone who doesn't pay his tithe will not make it to heaven. Oh, there were there were lots of talks about that. And, and now it took me aback seriously when I heard that statement. I was like, yay, that's is that not going too far. But then the Lord spoke to me about it. He said, that's what I do. Because now I respect him so much. Now, when he made a statement like that, I like, dear yeah, Lord, is your servant. Why would he say such a thing? Because now you're thinking, maybe he just wants to encourage people to, to tithe, which is right, you know. And then, but then he wants to just put it so raw and, and heavy on them. You know, so I'm like, Lord, but that's going too far. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, but he's right. I'm like, right? How? I want you to pay attention. Then the Lord said to me, he said, now he, he's taught me concerning Titan already, right? And, and he's taught me that Titan is connected to the voice of the Lord. Now, if we have the time and I have the leading, I'll share a bit of that to you, uh, this week, you know, not today, but this week. So he said, Titan is connected to the voice. So yeah. Then he said to me, he said, and you trust that my relationship with you will bring blessing. I said, yeah. If my relationship with you will bring blessing, 
and you are trusting my voice to guide you, then there is no way that blessing will be complete without you tithing. I said, yes, I know that. So if I never speak to you about tithing, will you be blessed? I said, well, not consistently. Yeah, I, I use those words with all caution. Not consistently. But then, every child of God wants to prosper. What prosper, Prosperity or prospering doesn't mean having more money. It means whatever you're doing, you want to be sure that's the right thing you're doing. Number two, you want to see that you're growing in it, right? That's, that's prosperity. You're growing in whatever you have started. Okay, so, so yeah, that's the truth. So anyone who's working with me, because the people who are going to, who are going to make it to heaven are people who are working with the Lord. Not church goers, but people, individuals who are working with the Lord. And you've not heard the Lord command you where Titan is concerned. At least you would have gotten to that point in your life where you cry out to the Lord for help. And then the Lord will instruct you. Just like he said, will a man rob God? You are robbing me. How? In Titan offered. He had to correct the children of Israel through the prophet Malachi. See that now? Now he does it to individuals also. When you get to that point, you're like, Lord, why are things not working in my life? And then he opens up and tells you, it's because you have not been tied. It. Oh, wow. He did that to me. Now, now he didn't do that to me because I wasn't tied. He did that to me to caution me about the way I have been tied. In. See that now? So I understood what he was saying to me. So if you have never received that kind of caution, if you have never received his instruction where that is concerned, brothers and sisters, I think your hearing has a problem. I really can vouch that you're hearing the voice of God. And if you're not hearing the voice of God, how do you want to make it to heaven? Oh yeah, because listen, Every one of us will be given the opportunity to go to heaven. That's another day's talk. So if you don't hear the voice of God, how then would you make it to heaven? Because the way you're going to be transported to heaven will be by the sound that you will hear. Ah, le bosu breke de menekeya. My time is up for today. <laughs> God. Oh, Father, we bless you. Your word is heavy in our mouths, but it's a blessing to everyone that hears. I pray by these words, understanding will come to everyone that is hearing. And they will begin to be instructed of you. They will hear your voice and they will obey. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.